In today's video, I show you the anatomy and some pathology of the superior perineal retinaculum. Make sure you watch the complete video because I will show you a little trick at the end of this video. If you google for the superior peroneal retinaculum and you want to have some nice images you will see that the anatomy is not always the same. So let's take this one here for example and you can see that the superior peroneal retinaculum is running slightly obliquely downwards to the calcaneus and then there are other images like this one here where it's a bit, little bit broader and has different portions and then here you have like two distinct portions of the superior peroneal retinaculum and the reason is probably because there is some variety and it's not always the same but it's not important anyways because the really important stuff is happening here at the attachment of the superior peroneal retinaculum onto the fibula. So let me just show you here a normal superior peroneal retinaculum. We zoom in a little bit. We have the peroneus longus tendon here, peroneus brevis tendon here. And one easy way to remember which one is which is the peroneus longus, which is abbreviated PL, lies posterior laterally. So posteriorly and laterally, that's the peroneus longus tendon. So the superior peroneal retinaculum attaches here onto the periost or periosteum of the fibula or the malleolus lateralis and typically at the site of the insertion, let me zoom in here, you have this triangle here. It's always a black triangle, like a little bit like a mini meniscus here. And then we have this soft tissue band here, keeping the peroneal tendons here in place behind the lateral malleolus during the flex flexion and extension of the foot so that these tendons do not subluxate or dislocate laterally here. So always look for this little triangle here. You should see this in basically every patient here. Let me just open another random patient. So this is just another MRI and we are again at the level of the ankle joint and we can see we have the peroneal tendons here, longus et brevis, and then you see this band here, and we have this little triangle here. So the resolution in this patient here is not so great, or in this scan, but this is a normal superior peroneal retinaculum. And you can see that we don't have any thickening or any uh, scar tissue here around or at the lateral border of the lateral malleolus. So keep this in mind. So here again, another patient, let me zoom in. We have the peroneal tendons. We are going distally and then you will see here this little triangle here where the superior peroneal retinaculum attaches and keeps these tendons in place. And we have the subcutaneous fat tissue here overlaying, overlying here and no scar tissue. This is a nice example of a injury of the superior peroneal retinaculum and we can see two fragments here. First of all a very tiny one, a cortical fragment up here and the bigger one down here below. So always make sure you assess radiographs of the ankle joint for these avulsion fragments here and at this location there are almost always an avulsion injury of the superior peroneal retinaculum. This is the corresponding MRI and you can see here one of these fragments, the bigger one down below here at the tip, but lateral. It's not an avulsion of the lateral ligaments here because we have these ligaments all here really nicely visible. So this is an um, avulsion injury of the superior peroneal retinaculum with a broader insertion here. And this tiny little fragment here is probably really hard to see on MRI. So that, so that means that if you have an radiograph available, have a look there. Now let's have a look here at the transverse sections. Let me make this a little bit bigger. We start proximally and you can see the tendons, peroneus longus and peroneus brevis, and we have the retinaculum here. And you can see it's not inserting onto the lateral aspect of the fibula. So it's avulsed. There is like one tiny portion that might still be inserting, but down below here, everything is completely torn. We have this fragment here. We have the bigger fragment down here. Now in this position, and that's typically the case, the perineal tendons do not subluxate, even if you have an injury. Sometimes that's the case, but sometimes this dislocation or subluxation is a dynamic process. So if you see a injury of the superior peroneal retinaculum, mention it 
and if the tendons are okay you can recommend an ultrasound a dynamic ultrasound examination to see whether they subluxate during the movement of the ankle joint so this is a similar case this time we don't have an avulsion fracture but we have some soft tissue swelling here uh, lateral of the lateral malleolus here no fragments visible but the patient has prolonged pain and eventually gets an MRI and in the MRI we can see the following starting proximally we have the peroneus longus tendon peroneus brevis tendon and we are now scrolling distally and we can start to see parts of the superior peroneal retinaculum and we would expect our black triangle here at this location but all we can see is some bands everything is dirty and gray and thickened and here at the level of the tip we can start to see that the peroneus brevis tendon first of all is flattened and the portion of it is actually subluxating laterally so that means that can only happen if the superior peroneal retinaculum is not intact and keeping it in place so that's why there is the possibility for the peroneus brevis tendon to dislocate or subluxate and everything here is scar tissue around it so torn superior peroneal retinaculum with a peroneal tendon dislocation or subluxation in this case Thanks for staying up to now and if you like the content so far make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And this is now the trick and the tip that I mentioned at the beginning of the video because sometimes you see these avulsion injuries here on the CT of the ankle joint and you just mention it as an avulsion injury you might even know that it's the superior peroneal retinaculum and you move on and describe all the other fractures and stuff like that. It's, it's important that if you see this that you also have a look at the soft tissue window and the reason is because you then can see the tendons and this is not only true for the lateral side but also for the medial side. Now if we scroll down we come here to the side of this fragment and you can see that the perineal tendons are interposed between the fragment and the lateral malleolus. So this fragment and with that also the superior peroneal retinaculum cannot heal by itself and it's probably a, a thing that the surgeon has to go in and do something about it because it's not going to heal by itself. And this was the follow-up uh, image one month after the CT and you can still see the fragment here displaced laterally and that means that the peroneal tendons are probably still subluxated here or dislocated and interposed between this fragment and this malleolus lateralis. The topic of today's video was a little bit different than the usual stuff that I do. However, I really think that it's an important topic because I frequently see cases where the peroneal tendon dislocation uh, was missed on a previous CT scan and uh, that, that's not so good actually. With that, there is only one thing left to say. I would like to say thank you to my newest patrons and that's Farsad and Nathan. Hi guys, thanks for your support. It's really well appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. You find a list of all my patrons here. And if you want to support this channel too, go check the link in the description down below. And with that, see you next week.